Hi, I'm Belinda. Welcome to my studio. Today is number three in a series on a printmaking method called monotype. This is a very old, very painterly printmaking method that was used by the likes of Edgar Degas, Paul Gauguin, and many, many others. It's beautiful, it's easy, it doesn't require a lot of tools. As a matter of fact, today we're going to make it right directly off the studio table. We're not even going to use a printmaking plate. Let's have a look. Any printmaking ink will work in this project. I'm going to use Akua Intaglio in the color graphite. And I'll be rolling the ink out on a sheet of plexiglass or acrylic. Here in California, I bought it at Home Depot, but you can buy it in a variety of sizes at most hardware stores. And if you have a dark colored desk, slide pieces of paper underneath it so that you have a white work surface. Even large sheets of newsprint underneath the plexiglass will give you a neutral colored palette for mixing your printmaking inks directly on the plexiglass surface. I've covered a little over half of my work surface with a sheet of plexiglass with printmaking paper underneath it as you can see here and it's a great work surface for printmaking as well as painting and drawing. If you're using Akua Intaglio ink make sure to stir it well and then just put a small amount out on your work surface to roll out with the brayer. Roll the ink out evenly in a space that is a little bit smaller than the paper that you plan to print with. If your brayer leaves some track marks in the ink, that's okay. It's most important that the ink is just evenly distributed so that you have the same thickness throughout. And if your edges are a little messy like this, we're going to use a paper towel wrapped around a rubber gloved finger to clean up those edges. I'm going to use uh, the handle of a paintbrush as my drawing tool to just put a little bit of a line drawing, sketchy and loose and gestural, into the wet ink. If you're drawing like this and you make a mistake, just take your brayer and roll the whole thing out and flatten the ink again and start over. Or you can refer to either of the previous two videos on this channel called Trace Monotype so you can trace a drawing on here and as you peel your traceable image off the ink, it will have left a map in the ink for you to do this next step. I'm going to use um, a cotton swab that looks like a Q-tip, but it's called a G-tip because these are meant for cleaning guns. They are low lint and this is the round side. The opposite side has a point to it, which is great for removing ink in small, tiny areas where you want to get some detail. There are links to those G-tips and all the supplies I used in the video underneath the video window in the show more section. If you're using the same ink here that I'm using, the Akua Intaglio, you don't have to worry about the ink drying. You can take your time working on your image. It won't start to dry until it's pressed to paper. If you're using oil-based ink, it will eventually dry, um, but it's not going to dry for the first couple of hours that you've got it rolled out, so you still have time with that as well. There are some other water-based printmaking inks that dry very, very quickly. And if you're using acrylic, that also dries very quickly. And if it's water-based, you might be able to use a spritzer to keep it moist. But ultimately, for a clean transfer of the ink to the paper, the ink has to remain wet throughout this process with no drying whatsoever so that you can get it to transfer when you press the paper to the wet ink. So I have found that the best ink for that is either an oil-based ink that takes a long time to dry or the Akua Intaglio that doesn't start drying until it's pressed against the paper. To vary the mark making in the monotype, I'm using the G-tip or Q-tip uh, as well as paper towel wrapped around my finger. You can use anything you'd like that'll scrape through and alter the look of the ink. If you don't like the way a mark looks, just tap your finger in ink around it and flatten it out and go back in with another tool. For some inspiration, do a Google image search to look for monotype and Edgar Degas or monotype and Paul Gauguin. To keep my hand from smudging the wet ink as I rest it to draw, I'm using a drawing bridge. This one is made out of wood by a friend of mine, but you can buy these in art supply stores and online, usually made out of acrylic so that you can rest your hand over your wet ink without touching it and still go in and add detail. You'll get a cleaner transfer of the ink to paper if you use a thin, flexible paper. This is Taiwanese Kozo or Mulberry, which is thin, somewhat transparent, and very tough for how thin it is. 
You can roll a clean brayer on the back of the paper to transfer the image, or just hold it in place and use your hands. This is the 25 sheet pack of mulberry paper that I'm using and I'll add a link in the show more section. When you feel like you've got enough ink transferred to the paper, just pull it off the ink and then put it somewhere to dry. There are other monotype tutorial videos on this channel like this one that uses a zinc plate to do a portrait of a dog, as well as this one which is a trace monotype using watercolor and colored pencil over the finished image. Now that the monotype is dry, I'm going to use Prismacolor colored pencils to increase the darks in some areas. If you have a reference photo that you used for your initial drawing, it'll be helpful to print the reference photo in black and white. Use the pencils to adjust your values and refine your details while still leaving the interesting textures in the ink visible in other areas. And mostly, have fun. So that was a dark field monotype. If you have any questions about making one of these, leave those in the comment section below. If you thought this tutorial was helpful, please leave me a thumbs up so that I have some feedback. If you're looking for the supplies, those are listed in the show more section, which is also beneath the video window. And if you're interested in seeing more videos like these, I have a bunch of them in the works, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any. In the meantime, I hope you're making something and I'll see you in the studio soon. Bye.